my name is Bernard Canavan. I'm a painter here in London. For many years I taught history at the Irish Cultural Centre in Hammersmith and they asked me if I could say a few words to commemorate the birthday on the 13th of June of W.B. Yeats, our great national poet who was born in 1865. Well, I might look like I've been born about then myself, as under lockdown I haven't had the opportunity to visit a barber for the past two months, but I'm not quite as ancient as I look. Yeats had an effect on all our lives, usually in the form of giving eloquent expression to our Irish memories, and maybe even shaping them in a way that we had not noticed ourselves. I ended up in Chalk Farm in 1965, where the Yeats family lived for a time, and I was constantly reminded of the great man when I passed the blue plaque on the wall of the house where he lived, one of the great many places that he occupied in London during a very peripatetic life. Of course, the poem I knew, and perhaps we all know, is The Haunting Lake Isle of Ennis Free, whose verses we composed during a pang of homesickness for his native Sligo. It was inspired by the American essayist Henry David Thoreau, who bought an old hut by a pond in Walden, Connecticut, and spent his time reading the Greek and Roman classics and observing nature and the effect of light on the woods around him. It was a little that Yeats drew on for his sense of solitude. What he didn't tell us, and I didn't learn myself until later, was that Thoreau's hut was at the bottom of his friend's garden, Emerson's. Mine was not a particularly refined or Yeatsian sensibility, as I had grown up on the pavement's grey of a small Irish town whose only sound of life I can remember was the echoing of the monumental mason's mallet and limestone slabs, or the rattle of a turf cart coming from the bog. I was only too delighted to be here in the heart of throbbing London, earning a crust doing illustrations for the new underground papers, Oz and International Times and New Society, devoted to sex, drugs and rock and roll in swinging London and living at the centre of an artistic life in Chalk Farm. Yeats introduced me to Thoreau and he had written an essay on civil disobedience which I read and it set me on a very different path from the Ireland I left where they were celebrating gunshot and revolution in the form of the 50th anniversary of the 1916 Rising, an event that Yeats himself wrote about with a kind of wistful sadness. His poem introduced me to Thoreau's message of non-violent protest. And as a result, I bought, brought some of my, my anti-war sketches to the offices of Peace News, a pacifist magazine in London, and I became their regular editorial illustrator, protesting about the war in Vietnam, Biafra, and the student riots in London, Paris, and California. I supported these protests, but I thought that non-violence was the only real answer to the violence of the state. So I believe that Ennis Free by Yeats had a particularly direct impact on my life. He has left us with a language of the heart and yet capable of expressing some of the most abstract political ideas with power and freshness. He has a range and expression as majestic as the Georgian mansion, and yet he can write of love as tenderly and intimate as a whisper. It's given us a voice that is inimitable, both, both aristocratic and artistic, and it encourages us to aim higher than the often grubby, brutal standards that church and state set in my youth. Listen to the haunting rhythms of that poem's final verse. Alas, my reading can't do its justice by any means, but let me, let me just try. I will arise and go now. For always night and day, I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. When I stand on the roadway or in the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. So let me celebrate his birthday with pride and a certain amount of gratitude. Happy birthday, W.B. Yeats. You are fed on nostalgia for that beautiful Ireland that we left behind. And maybe encourage millions of others to come to visit the place even though they had only heard his rhymes. Happy birthday.